Do you want access to a music app that has scores for all the latest pop songs, film music, holiday music, jazz standards, and other styles? Pay attention to this video. I'm going to be reviewing the Tom Play app, and this app is for musicians of any instrument of all levels. Let's dig in. Hi, I'm Donna from DonnaSchwartzMusic.com, the site to boost your music performance and improvisation skills up to the next level. So a few of my students use the Tom Play app, and I was always curious about it. Um, I heard that they had a lot of sheet music in there. I knew that they had a cursor that kind of followed the music. I was pretty curious about it. And interestingly enough, the folks at Tom Play reached out to me to do a review. So I've been checking out the app, um, checking out some of the scores, and I really like it, it's really good. So what I wanna do, I wanna tell you about some of the main features, um, show you a little bit of the back end, you know, some of the things that I think are absolutely awesome things for you to consider. I will say this, this is definitely for um, all melody instruments and it is for all levels. I think this will benefit people that are advanced beginners, um, intermediate level players. Um, I think they'll benefit those players the most. However, if you're an advanced player, if you're playing gigs and stuff like that, um, or you just want to enjoy playing music, I think this is a great app because they put, every week they add 200 more scores into this app. And it's not just the latest pop music. There's old style Dixieland in there. There's jazz standards. There's other genres in there as well. Let's get into the app and let me show you some of the main features. Okay, so here we are in the app. And this is the home page. This is the shop page. It's around Christmas time getting there. So you're going to see a banner over here with whatever holidays coming up. Um, in addition to film sheet music, everybody loves playing scores from films. And then you're seeing all the latest stuff that they've been uploading. And it's not just pop music. Okay. Um, there's some holiday stuff over here. There's some jazz stuff. There's some older types of jazz standards over here over here as well. Classical music as well. Uh, let's see, just going down. I thought I saw something in um, for Latin music. Okay, just all types of things. I mean, there's tons of things here. Uh, let me take a score that I downloaded. Let me take the Horace Silver one over here. This is, if I tap on the picture, it gives you some information. It shows you a quick score over here. Uh, the difficulty level. Now here's the cool thing. There's not just one difficulty level of score. You can get easy. You can get um, intermediate level. You can get um, advanced. Sometimes there's easy slash intermediate level. So that's really, really cool. You got some options there. Let me click on play. Now I am presented with two options here. And to me, this is gold. I was always under the assumption that you could only play the score with the written notes, which is great, which is fine. I mean, who, you know, doesn't want that? And you get you get the option of having so many uh, sheets of music available to you, and you have the cursor if you need to, the cursor will follow you, um, will guide you through the score. But I didn't know about option number two, Tom Improv. So if you learned how to play your instrument by ear, or let's say your note reading isn't where you want it to be yet, this is a great option because if you know the melody really well, okay, whether or not you read great or not, if you know the melody really well and you want to work on your improv, take this option. Could you work on your improv with option one? Yes. Um, but you're going to see, I'm going to show you something in a few minutes. They actually have an, a sample solo in there that's actually really good. If you don't want to get visually distracted with that, I'd opt for option two. Let's check out option two. I'm so excited about this part. Um, I can't even begin to tell you. All right, so what they do here, you're going to notice right away that we do have the lead in part. This starts with a pickup, you know, on the end of three. So this is going to guide you. All right, now this is not the actual, this is a little easier version of the actual melody over here. Um, it's not the actual, you know, just a little bit of a visual guide here. But what's really cool, the notes stop, okay? You're playing the melody the way you want to. You've got the chords, which is great. You got the chord symbols, but if you don't read music very well, or if you don't know what's in that chord, here you go, right in the flesh, <laughs> right there. And it's all spelled out and the letter names are in the notes. So this could also help you to read music too, by the way. Now, what's also great, 
they break down the form verse one and then let's say i'm going to go to the next page by tapping on one of these dots this is page two here's the bridge okay this is great now again this is not the actual rhythms from the actual melody but it's just a visual guide to show you where you are and it keeps going on verse two and bridge two okay so that's basically the form and now here's the solos all right so the other thing too if you find that you tend to get lost during your solos this is a great option for you because it's going to show you um you know where you are on the chords and then you know you could associate it for me it's better to, to associate the hearing first and then the visual but for some people they're going to work the other way that's fine um, and you're going to follow along. So let me show you from the very beginning. Um, for copyright reasons, I can't show the entire thing. And when I show you my playing example, I can't show everything. I have to do a short snippet. Um, but let me just give you an idea what this looks like. Okay, so the cursors are ready to the beginning. Um, I have the count off set to do click count off, not visual, audi auditory click count off. So let's hear what this backing track sounds like for the improv section. I just press, press the space bar to stop it. Now, did you notice that two things? Did you notice that it didn't play this for you? That's your job. You've got to play it, right? So I had two bar, two bar count in. So you're going to be playing the melody here and going on. But did you notice that when we were over here, um, you started to see the next page? It was almost like someone was turning the page for you slowly. That's really, really cool. Okay. Um, and did you also notice the cursor was showing you where you were in this song form. I think this is fantastic. I think this is gold. This is great. Now, what I want to do is I want to show you the other features that are in here, but I want to use the other part of the Tom Play app to show you that. So we're going to go with option one. Now you see, uh, this. remember this is the intermediate level one that I actually picked. So uh, you're going to see the melody, a little bit more intricate than what you just saw. Um, and you've got everything written down here. Okay, now let me start this from the top and here we go. So um, I changed the name of this for me because there's a feature that I wanna show you in here. Okay, so we've got the metronome. I can click on that, I could move it up, I could move it down. This is great if you're learning a song that's kinda of fast and you just wanna, you wanna learn it. Okay, so you could set this to whatever metronome marking you want. Um, if, now another great feature with Tom Play, they have fingering charts. Okay, you could, you could click um, in, the, um, in the settings part, you can click and you could uh, download the fingering chart for your instrument. But here's what's really good. Let's say, you know, you know most of your fingerings, whatever, but you don't know what this note is over here. Okay, or the fingering for this E flat. I'm going to click on visual. I'm going to tap on this note Whoops, right there. There we go. And here we have it. Let me just bring the screen a little higher. There's your fingering, right? So you've got the octave key. Um, you've got the two palm keys over here. Let's say I, you know, I want to, I know B flat, but there's four fingerings for B flat. They're actually going to show you the two most popular ones here. Um, they're going to show you the bis fingering and then the A plus the bottom side. So, if you forgot like, you know, which B flat fingering you want or whatever, you could look here and you've got two options here, which is great. Could you play the score and they will show you the fingerings for every note? Yes. I don't recommend that though. That's too, that's too distracting. That's getting you away from using your ears, you know, to, um, to learn this music really well. But the, an on the spot check for fingering, that's awesome. To get out of this, I just click visual and then it's gone. Okay. Um, in terms of playing, you could also tune. This is going to be in concert pitch. So when I click on this, that's a piano B flat. Okay, that's not my tenor sax B flat. That would be my tenor C or my trumpet or clarinet C. 
or my alto G. So you could tune to concert B flat or concert A or any note you want. Okay, I tend to, to I like to tune to concert A. Some people like to tune to concert F. Totally your choice. I'm going to get out of that. Uh, let's see. Let me talk about annotating the score while I'm up here. You could add text. You could highlight. Okay, so I love to highlight, you know, if there are repeats. I love to, um, to show that. All right, so I'm going to pick actually that color. And I'm just going to go here. There we go. There's the start of the song. I made a mistake. I could undo it. I could also erase it too. Okay. Uh, let me go. Gonna click back. I could draw. I could do text. I could put notes in. All right. So for example, um, let me go actually to something that I drew in already. Over here. Let's say I want to put in a chord scale. Okay. So all I did was I clicked on text and I would, let's say, double click over here and I could write in Go. I could type that in if I made a mistake. I could exit out, okay, um, and you know I could or I could move it around if I want to. So many options. I'm going to X out of that. Okay, so you have options here with annotations. Okay, now the next thing that I wanted to show you that's really really super important is the loop feature. Okay, so let's say you're in a spot in the music. Okay, let's let's say it's right here, and you know, you've put the metronome kind of slow and you still you still want to work it out. One of the best things that you could do is loop a few bars. All right, so what I would do, I'd click on loop, put the cursor to where I want it to start, and let's say I wanted to work on these three bars. I'm going to move this other cursor, the ending cursor, to the end of this measure. And now, when I click on play, I'm going to get that count in and it's going to loop this for as long as it needs to go. So let me show you that. And I just pressed the space bar to stop it. Okay, so you get the idea. And here it was a one measure count off. Now I, I click loop again to get rid of that cursor. By the way, um, I could put this cursor anywhere I need to to work on, on the song. Okay, so let's say it's in the spot where there's a solo here. I could start the recording here. Love that page turn. I had to show that because that was really cool. Okay, so now we're getting an idea of what this sounds like, the backing track, all that kind of thing. We see all the great features. Now there's something here that I think is so cool. All right, so the song is essentially done, the song form. What they put in here, which I think is really good, is a sample solo. Now the solo does not change every time you call up the app. This solo is in here, it's written out. And it's gonna, you know, it's gonna go over the song form for, I guess, a couple of times here. This is a great example of a solo. Now, if you are working on your improvisation, you could study this solo. You could work it out, treat it like an etude, not, um, not something to, you know, perform in public, because that's, I mean, you could do that. It's just not an improvisation. Okay, if you want to improvise over this song, you don't want to be performing a written out improvisation. You want to actually improvise. But if you're learning improvisation, etudes are wonderful, wonderful sources to learn improvisation. And this, I think, is a well-crafted solo here. So you are you could learn this solo and you could see how, wow, a C over a G minor 7? But that's not a chord tone. It works, okay? It's the, it's the 11th. It works over a minor 7th chord, which is great. You could see all the note choices. You can see, okay, there's an E flat in here. Wow, that's a little weird. This can give you clues, though, to the type of chord scale that you would use as well. Um, and you notice there's there's sequences here. Okay, that's those are patterns that repeat. There's um, 
in fact, many times, which is great, that gives coherence to the solo. There's chromaticism, there's enclosures here, okay? Um, there's, there's chromaticism over here that's going to imply certain chord tone scales, or chord scale, excuse me. Um, and there's variety of rhythms. We've had eighth notes, we've got rests. Rests are just as important as notes. Got some held notes, you've got some sixteenths going on here. Um, just really, really good stuff. Really good stuff. I really like this. Let me show you, um, yeah, let me show you this excerpt that I played before so you could see how I followed along with this. I'm going to go under the settings gear over here. You can control a lot of things here. If that cursor is really irritating you, you could uncheck this and it's gone. You could hide this toolbar that's up here so you have a little bit more space on the page. Okay, I'm on a laptop, so most people are going to use this on a tablet. And um, yeah, I definitely recommend that because from, from what you know I've seen and I hear, um, it looks really good on a tablet. It's almost like uh, some of the apps that we all use to store our music. So um, auto-hiding the toolbar is going to give you more space. It's going to really help. You could change the pitch of the accompaniment. Now here's the thing though. I set this um, in my main settings for this whole app. I set this for, um, for saxophone, uh, tenor sax. And, and when I chose my song, I chose the tenor sax song tenor sax version. So this is going to be geared for me. This is my G minor seven chord. The piano is, you know, they're playing an A flat right here, which is going to sound like my B flat. I don't really need to change this. Okay. Um, unless, you know, I'm, I'm looking at a concert score. Um, for whatever reason, I chose a concert score. I could always change up the accompaniment pitch and this is in semitones. It's not in full steps. It's in half steps. The latency, this is great that they thought of this. Okay, so you can sync sometimes when you're playing along with an accompaniment, sometimes it sounds off, all right? And it, that's the latency, okay? It just has to it just, just has to deal with when the signals reach each other. Um, you could synchronize the accompaniment with your playing. You can increase the values, you can decrease the values until that delay, that latency is gone. I think that's awesome. Here's the count off part. If you want a visual, you can click on this and that'll show on the screen. I chose audio and you could choose how many measures you want. If you want none, then it's none. If you want one measure or two, you can do that as well. Okay. So you click save and there's your settings right there. Now, if you want to just play along with the metronome, you could just click this and you can keep working on whatever you need to work on. If you would use that if you feel like you're getting distracted with the backing track. Although I've got to say the big, uh, the huge advantage with this app is the backing track and you could adjust the tempo over here and you can loop. So to me, I think that would be a better option, but everybody's different. Everybody, you know, has certain ways of learning. So this is a feature that they thought about, which is great. Um, in terms of the audios, you could also, if I wanted to hear what the saxophone part sounded like, I can, put the uh, the slider all the way over here and let's see what this sounds like from right here. Okay, it sounds pretty close to being a tenor sax. I think it's I think it's passable for the most part. Um, so you could set if you want to, you know, I don't personally want that in there, so I put that over here. If you want less piano, more bass, less drums, whatever, you could set that in here. Now, the other key piece of this as well, and this is really important, it's a good pro tip, you can record yourself. Okay, so let's say uh, I'm over here. I'm going to click... And I'd be playing along with this right now. And it would be capturing it. I could name my recording. I could listen to it. Now I could make the backing track louder or softer. I could make my recording volume 
a little louder if I want to. I could even it out, whatever I want to do. Here's where the latency is going to be super important. Okay, so if you're using Bluetooth, all right, this is going to be really valuable. So after you, you know, make the recording, you can listen to this and fix the latency so that everything is lined up. I think this is great. Okay, and then you would press save. Now, after you've recorded, you're probably wondering, where do I find the recordings? It's going to be under audio. Just click on the arrow and you're going to see the recordings down here and you could press play and you can hear them over here. All right, I could just click this arrow to get out of here. Okay, now let's say I want to, you know, do another song. So I'm going to click back and then I click this home page over here. And then these are all the scores that I've downloaded. Okay, or that were put in here for me. So many different choices here that I've chosen, but let's say I want something new. I can go to the shop right here and I'm backed at the home page and I've got so many things to choose from. I could also type something in the search bar and find that. Okay, do you see over here where it says instrument? Here's where I chose my instrument. So this way I don't have a million scores with all these different instruments. I want to choose, um, let's say, let's say it's going to be alto sax this time. I want to choose alto sax. So I'm going to go over here, click on the arrow or click on the, the symbol. And as you see, I chose saxophone already, but there's, you know, four different types here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this and then I can choose soprano, alto, tenor. Um, they have all saxophone types over here, so you can get those. They don't have one for Barry yet. Okay. I'm sure that's going to be coming soon, but let me click on alto. And now you're going to see everything's going to be showing for alto sax for those of, so for those of us that double, or triple on instruments, you've got so many choices. Let's say I wanted to do trumpet. Now everything's showing up for trumpet. And again, there's so many different styles here. We're getting Christmas music for trumpet here as well. Okay. Uh, let me bring this back to tenor sax. Also down here, these are the new things. These, you could click over here. You can get the popular stuff of all different styles. Of course, Baker Street's going to show up for any saxophone player, right? <laughs> and the Pink Panther too. Um, shallow, awesome tune. Okay. You could browse. So you get, you get some features over here. You could browse also saxophone solo. So there's no accompaniment, orchestral accompaniment, piano, duet. This is just so many things here. And then there's collections over here. So you're going to see like some film music or Christmas music. Okay. And if you, um, we're going to talk about subscription levels in a second, cause you're seeing some pricing types of things here as well. All right. But there's so many features in here that you could take advantage of. Okay. So we're on their website. I'm going to put a link in the description, by the way. And over here, you could see try 14 days free. I would absolutely recommend that try out all the, uh, you know, the different instruments that you play, try out the scores, try out the backing tracks. If you're into improvisation, uh, use the suggestions that I mentioned. Okay. Um, if you want to use this on your, you know, your PC or your, you know, your laptop or any mobile device, test that out, make sure it works for you. Now, when it comes to the, the actual, you know, like payment plans and stuff like that, um, there's an option to go premium. So let me just click on this for one second. Do the 14 day trial. That's what I would recommend. And then like right now, these are the prices. This is going to change if you're watching this years from now. But um, the cool thing about premium, you get unlimited access to the entire catalog. So they're uploading, you know, hundreds of songs per week. You're going to get access to that. Okay. They even saying 200 new scores added per week and you'll have this app available on all of your devices. Okay. Plus you're going to get priority access to customer service. So I would, I would really recommend this. If you're a teacher or you work in a school, you've got your own options here and uh, they actually created this for teachers and they, they send you helpful emails and they also have like a, you know, webinar invites for training and that kind of thing but you also can take advantage of a 14 day free trial. You also have other extra free features because it will allow you to, well, not only record, but you could share your recordings with your students. They can share their recordings with you. Okay. Um, so that's going to help them learn, 
you know, them hearing you. And also it's going to help you get an idea of where they're at uh, with their own playing, with their own understanding of their assignments. All right. So for teachers, you have your own little tab over here. You could definitely check that out as well. And this will be a great tool for you, whether you see your students live or online. And one more thing I wanted to mention too, I alluded to this before, but if you're on their main website and you go over to tools and you go to fingering charts, you get access to fingering charts for these instruments. And let's say, uh, okay, let's look at the saxophone fingering chart here for a second. You can download this for sure. And this is really nice because this will help you to see this. Okay, they show you on the instrument where the keys are. And for every, let's say, you know, you know most of the notes, but you didn't know low B flat or A sharp. <laughs> It plays it for you <laughs> and it shows you the fingering. Now all the saxophones have the same fingerings up to the F. Um, it changes a little bit over here, all right, but the hard thing that is that it changes not only between tenor and alto, but different models have different fingerings, especially for altissimo, that are better for them. Okay, so when it comes to altissimo playing, um, it's very difficult to have one fingering chart that's going to address every single model of horn so please keep that in mind but for the basic horn from b flat up to f and maybe even f sharp um you're going to have the same fingerings here for all the saxophones you know all the way up to barry as well now even if you didn't take advantage of signing up for tom play this fingering chart right here it's free Okay, so you could just go to, you know, their website and then click on tools and fingering charts and you can get access to this. And you could download it by clicking over here. This is a pretty cool app, right? There's so many great features in this app. I really think it's a great bargain and I wouldn't have done this review if I didn't think that this could benefit so many people. Now, if you're interested, there will be a link in the description below. Definitely check it out. I'd recommend that you do the 14-day free trial um, just to get a, you know accustomed to the program, see if the scores that are in there are things that you would like to play. Um, and then I would suggest probably going with the premium subscription because with that premium subscription, you get access to all the scores. Um, if you don't do that, then um, you'll still have the app, but you'll be able to pay for each individual score, which I think in the long run will probably cost more money. Okay, I'm curious. So do you already use the Tom Play app? If so, let me know in the comments below. And if you don't use the Tom Play app, I'm curious if you're gonna definitely check it out. Let me also know in the comments below. Tap that subscribe button and notification bell to be the first to know when new videos are out. Thanks for joining me. I hope that this video helped you make a decision about using and purchasing the Tom Play app.